Romans chapters 9. Romans chapters 9. We will read from verse 6. Not as though the word of God had taken none effect. For they are not all Israel which are of Israel. I want to read that again. Not as though the word of God had taken none effect. For they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. I want to read that again. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise. At this time shall I come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that call it. It was said unto him, The elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sparing our lives to see the light of this beautiful day. We thank you for the rains. It's a blessing from heaven. We thank you, Lord, for your children who have gathered again to identify with you, to worship you, to perform the only duty for which we are created. Bless each one in Jesus' name. Bless the little children downstairs and their teachers also. We remember our sister churches everywhere, wherever they have gathered to worship you. May your presence be among them, O oh God. We remember wherever the souls of men, women, and children are gathered today to bow their heads to their maker. Lord, may you bless them. For recognizing that there is God. And Lord, lead their footsteps. For you are the one that leads the footsteps of the righteous. That they may find where to worship you in spirit and in truth. Bless our gathering this morning. For we are gathering unto you. And unto the Lord shall the gathering of his people be. And when our life on earth is over. And our work here is done. Like Jacob may we be the beloved of the Lord. And may we Lord then. Into that gate of eternal life. Enter with you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And all we say, Amen. Amen. God bless you now. Be seated. Be seated. I want to share with you what I have titled Jacob and Esau. God gave me this message last Sunday, and I preached it in one of the churches in the East. And I feel strongly inspired to share it with you also this morning. Jacob 
and Esau. You find that in verse 13 of the passage we read. But our inspiration and anointing will come from verse 6. Not as though the word of God had taken none effect. For they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Can we say amen? amen? Brother, drop your pen. Drop it in your pocket. In your pocket. Put it in your pocket. Thank you, my son. Thank you very much. Good. I don't want any journalists here. Faith comes by. So just look at me. Have fellowship with me. Our fellowship is a spiritual communication. You cannot serve two masters. You may be listening to me and writing. You are getting nothing inside. Nothing. And when you leave here, you forget the piece of paper. You won't read it anymore. And you gain nothing from here. So you're a loser. Get the tape. The anointing, the message is captured in the tape and the video. Spend your money for what is real food. Real food. The word of God. Leave those pieces of papers. You're wasting your time writing this and that. Now, there are many things going on on earth today. Especially among churches. Different so-called churches. Even among believers. So-called believers. That one is tempted to ask the question. Is it that the word of God is not having any effect? Because Paul saw the same thing in his own days. How that man was anointed. And the Holy Ghost was overflowing. And even the shadows of Peter healed the sick and raised the dead. Even napkins taken from the body of Paul while in prison. Restricted. Moved out from him. And carried with it the anointing. That God gave that man to reach out to the Gentiles and heal the sick and deliver those in bondage of Satan. Yet, Paul was so worried about the activities and the fruits that emanate from the people, supposedly beneficiaries of the anointing that was upon him, that he had to say, is it that the word of God has had no effect? Paul was asking. Brother Branham asked the same question. Peter asked the same question. In fact, if you read the book of Jude, it is worse. So, what is the answer to this question? Is it that the word of God we have heard for years in and years out has had no effect? The Holy Spirit gave us the answer in the same passage or the next verses. That it is not that the word of God has had no effect. The truth is, all are not children of God. Can we say amen? amen. The fact about it is, not all that are in Israel are Israelites. In other words, not all that say, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom. Then the gates of life eternal may I enter Lord with thee. Not all will enter. Why? The word of God is what will take you into that gate. And if the word of God is not working, it's not transforming you, there is no way you can get or you be qualified, perfected, to enter into that gate. It's a shocking, very fearful passage. To realize that there are people, there are people that are not children of God. Some sons of God have gotten themselves hooked and married to women who are not daughters of God. Some precious, precious daughters of God have gotten themselves hooked with men who are not sons of God. And then you notice that the word of God is quick and alive in one. 
and dead in the other. You see on fellowship days, the one in whom the word of God is alive and operational is worried about missing fellowship. The other one is not worried at all. Don't mean nothing. Why? The word of God has no effect. And what does that mean? That is not a child of God. For a child of God fears and trembles at the word of God. Listen to me. May the Lord help us. In Genesis, God commanded that every tree should bring forth what? According to its kind. Now, I want you to expressly get something here. That was God's word. It remains true to you today. Every tree that is obedient to God and untampered, not tampered, by science and civilization, is still obedient to God. Gova will produce Gova. Mango will produce mango. Orange will produce orange. But science and devilish knowledge and education have done a lot to tamper with the word of God, to make the word of God without effect. Let me use a tree to give you an example of what the devil has done to many people. We all know an orange tree. Today science has given them knowledge that all oranges are citrus trees. They all belong to one family. Tangerine, tangelo, sweet orange, grape, they all belong to the same citrus family. So some scientists who are disobedient to the word of God, which commanded every tree to produce its kind only, have over Powered the trees because the trees cannot help themselves. These science scientists will bring tan a branch of tangelo, a branch of grape, a branch of tangerine, and engraft it a, a, a very sweet orange tree. And when you look at an orange, one branch is producing tangerine. One branch is producing lime, one branch is producing tangelo, and the other side has one big one like football. They're called grape. And if you don't understand what has happened to that tree, you say, wow, what a great revival going on here. Can you imagine what this one tree is producing? Praise the Lord. Then they even speak with tongues. But bring that to the scripture, it is zero. It is not even the word of God. Hallelujah. The ignorant will see that tree, one tree, producing tangerine, producing sweet orange, producing lime, producing grape, producing everything. And oh, the ignorant mind who is not scriptural will admire that tree and love it. And say, wow, this is, you don't need to plant all these trees. Just plant one and tie all this together. But is that the word of God? No. And that is what Satan has done to many people today. Powers beyond their ability to resist has come upon people and put some life that is not theirs upon them and they are producing fruit that is not theirs even those that go to church you see them producing certain kinds of character that you wonder what has happened to all the word of god that they have heard is it that the word of god has had no effect the word of god cannot be broken what is wrong with them is that the devil has engrafted into them the nature of Satan which is rebellious to the word of God. And they are producing that character. It looks nice. 
but it is not the word of God. And that's what is going on today. Praise the name of the Lord. Every tree should produce its kind. Seed shall produce its kind. For life is in the seed. Praise the name of the Lord. Now we have different types of seed. For example, the, we have natural seed, just like the trees we, we mentioned, mango, gova, orange. These are seed that produce natural trees. Then we have spiritual seed, which is the word of God. Amen? Spiritual seed, which is the word of God. Then we have human seed. Human seed, which is either the sons of God or sons of Belial. Either sons of God or sons of the devil. They are human seed. Sons of God will produce sons of God. Sons of Belial will produce sons of Belial. According to their kind. Glory be to God. Now what makes it look like? The word of God has had more effect. Each and every one of us here should ask himself or herself. Are you not a hypocrite? Because if you are a hypocrite, you will think that everybody else is a hypocrite. Because the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, complete that for me. As a woman thinks in her heart, so she is. What are you, sons of God? Then the gates of life eternal may I eh? it's a prayer Lord not, not, not Lord I must enter with you you cannot say that may that's, you're begging right good that's why I gave you the correction some time ago when we say let us talk to God it is different from let us pray to God you talk to your mate you talk to your junior but when you come to authority, like you go to court, if you go to court, you don't say you are talking to the judge. You pray. Because he has authority to, to say the final. Anybody who has authority to say the last, and what he says must happen, you beg that person. You don't talk to that person. Prayer is begging. Lord, may I enter with thee. You are appealing. Amen. Are you sure that the word of God has effect? It's effective in your life. It's alive. It's, it's, it's quick. It's quick and alive. It's effectual. It's reproducing what it's supposed to produce. Not all oh, in our church. We have the word of God. Yes. But what value? What, value, profit, what profit is that word? Is that word? Because, because everything, everything else we see. Is, only the, the word, word of God, God will continue into that, that gate. Every other thing will cease. Only the word of God will continue into that gate. Blessed be his holy name. The scripture says, Is it that the word of God has no effect? The answer comes, No, it is because not all are children of God. When a man dies, he cannot repent anymore. I don't care if the Pope comes from Rome. Or the Archbishop of Canterbury. Or the Patriarch of Nigeria. All of them organize one month revival service at the National Stadium in your name. You won't even hear what they're saying. Because the Bible says for the dead there's no remembrance. And he has no part with the living anymore. It is now that you find out if the word of God is operational in your life. If it is not, the reason is the word of God has not lost effect. It, the fact is that you are not a child of God. Period. One of my sons gave me this. Senate approved dress code for Unilag students. I said, well, I understood my son Isaac used this to 
bless you last week or something like that. And I said, fine. I am going to be correct at last. Not at first. Not at first. Amen. Let me tell you, saints, when all church doors close, and no more preaching, and no more repentance, no more baptism, no more fasting or prayer, and God sets the great white throne, my children will have nothing to do with judgment. Nothing. Amen. You know why? They have been judged. And they accepted their judgment. And they took correction. And the grace of God was made available for them. So they are not coming into any judgment. Glory be to our God. When I was shouting my life out and telling God's children that this thing came from the bottomless pit, it came from the bottom of the sea, it came from the devil himself. The women walking about naked today is a fulfillment of scripture that men were lost and lost and by the millions. What did the Bible say about the broad way that leads to destruction? How many walk in it? This is the time. And very many are walking in it. Even church bishops and, and pastors and teachers have nothing to say about it. Women go to church today with trousers. Some go to church with short makers. All their body showing left, right, and center, front and back, and the pastors and preachers do not have the boldness or the courage to call them to order. Paint up their mouth and paint up their nose and, my God, as if God made a mistake when he created a woman. But I have refused to line up with that. Glory be to our God. Because I know where it's coming from and I know where it will go back to. Blessed be the name of our God. Brother Branham spoke about it in one of the messages. How he saw a vision of hell and how the, the, the painted up faces came from hell. He spoke about Jezebel, the first woman in the Bible to paint up her face. What was her reward? Dogs ate her. And people were angry with me. Even some of my children here said, I am too archaic for their liking. Too old-fashioned preacher for their liking. But you know what? I'm running for my life. I'm running for my life. You know, if I am a money preacher, you know that. If I am crafty, like Paul says, if I have taken your money uh, craftily, you know that. But there's a scripture that guides me. Paul says, if you believe these things, if you preach these things, you will save yourself and then they hear you. And that's what I plan to do. Not to please anybody, but to save myself and to save all that hear me. Let's give the Lord a clap off for everybody. Hallelujah. Glory be to our God. These men are not ministers. They are not pastors or evangelists. They are just men, common men, that, that decent men. Maybe godly men that know what is good and decent. And they stood up in a place in that Sodom and Gomorrah called university. And say, enough is enough. And here I come before people bound to, to heaven. And say it. How many years ago have I screamed on this? I am going to be correct at last. Not at first. No, at last. When it's all over. When it's all over. I know. 
As long as God gives me grace and boldness to stand by the scriptures, I will be correct at last. When I see my children with all these tight dresses, I wonder if the word of God has lost meaning. When I see my children with short skirts and then turn somewhere again, I wonder if the word of God has lost its power. When I see married women, married women dressed like that, I wonder if they are married to men or they are married to women like themselves. I may be your pastor. Or brother, you are the pastor of your family. I want you to know that. You are the pastor of your family. Whatever you approve is what God records for that family. When I see my daughters dress up in a way that you can count their ribs, you can measure their buttocks with that tape, I wonder if that is my, my daughter. Can this be my daughter? Can this be the reward of my labor? Has the word of God lost its head? It's because you are not my child. You are not my daughter. You are not a daughter of God. If you are a child of God, the word of God will have effect in your life. You'll be glad to obey it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not spirits. They did not draw from the sky. Today we use them for a reference point. But they are human. They were young men like you and I. Young men, I don't mean old men, young men. Esther was a young lady. Mary was a young lady. These people reserved themselves for the use of God. They did not get carried away by fashion of their day. Today we preach about them. Today we are, we are proud of them. But where are the Marys of today? Where are the Esthers today? Where are the Shadrachs? Where are the Daniels of God today? Has the word of God lost effect? I want to hear you answer me. Why? Because not all in Israel are of Israel. May the Lord help us. Now, why is it that it looks like the word of God has lost effect. Listen to this. The reason is simple. The activities of these children of the flesh who always try to please the flesh, who want to be in vogue, who want to be carried away with the world like a dead fish, no resistance at all. Somebody told me, how can you say in this age that we are in, a woman should still be plating her hair? I said, show me which law says she should not. He said, well, the time has changed. So we should change with the time. I said, well, the God I worship does not change. My God does not change. And his world remains the same. Glory be to our God. Listen, my daughters, let me, let me advise you. All the women of the world may fry and palm their hair. Let me give you a secret. Every real man, every real man loves natural beauty. Hide that in your heart. And every real woman will admire you. Secretly, they admire your long hair. They admire your courage to be different. They admire your courage to be natural. They want to be like you, but they don't have that power inside. So they are carried along with like dead fish. So be what you are. You are in the world, but you are not a part of the world. Why is it, why does it look like in churches, among believers, 
They look like the word of God has lost effect. I tell you. It's because the activities of this worldly people, fleshly people, that the Bible says are not children of God. Their activities are more pronounced. They make more noise. They are all over the place. People see them more. But the activities of the real seed, real spiritual children of God are not pronounced. They are meek. They are humble. They are, they are, they are, not, uh, they are not inquisitive of popularity. They are very simple. See? And so it looks like those fleshly people who are not children of God are dominating. So everybody sees them more. Let me give you an example. You women, tell me. You want to cook rice. This is our natural rice or beans. You pour it in a tray. What are you looking for? Huh? You are looking for anything that is not beans, right? You will be looking at all the beans, but you won't see the beans. If there is one stick, one stick that is not beans, that's where your hand will go. Why? The beans is more, the, the stick that is not beans is more pronounced among plenty beans. Sometimes I watch people that want to cook and they want to clean up the rice. They pack all the rice, they pour it back. They're not interested. They pack it, they pour it back. They see one small stone. They push away all the rice and pick the stone. They're so interested in that one stone. Throw it away. Start looking for another stone. But there are more rice on the basin. More than stones. But they're not looking for rice. They're looking for stones. Because the stones should not be among rice. Tell me, among the apostles, who first got the biggest popularity? Huh? Judas. Because he wasn't an apostle. He was a, a devil. First he went and sold his Lord. Second he went and killed himself. So he was talked about more than all other apostles. Why? He was not a true apostle. The activities of the fleshly people who are not children of God is more pronounced and more noticed and more recognized and more talked about that the meek children of God are ignored as if they are not even there. But those that are ignored are the ones that God recognizes. Glory be to our God. Glory be to our God. Abraham's family. Abraham's family is a good example of the church today. Abraham's family is a good example of the church today. Because the Bible talked about two children there. One was Isaac, and one was, I wonder, Abraham's children were Isaac and Ishmael. The Bible says that child that was born out of the flesh, he is not a child of God. But the one that is born of promise, that is the one that is counted as a child of God. Blessed be his holy name. Two children. One is of the flesh. One is of the spirit. If your Bible is still open, Romans chapter 9, I want you to look at verse 7. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. 
But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come and Sarah shall have a son. Can we say amen? Can we say amen? Now I want you to pay attention. Please. I want you to pay attention. Please. I'm waiting for you, brother. I'm waiting for you. Thank you. Thank you. Listen to me. I don't want you to miss what I'm going to say. Do you know that the Bible says as many as received him, he gave them power to become children of God, right? Okay, listen, listen, listen. Don't miss this. There were two children that came out of Sarah. If that is true, say amen. Two children. The Bible says one is of the flesh. That was Ishmael. One is of the spirit. That was Isaac. Sarah could not produce Isaac until God came. That was the promise. At this time, I will... I will... That is promise, right? I will... And Sarah will... Until God comes, Sarah cannot have Isaac. Is that true? Sarah did not need God to come for her to have Ishmael. Can you see the difference? Can you see the difference? The difference between a child of God and a, someone who is not a child of God is big. It is divine and it is big. All those that did not need God to come before they are born, they are not children of God. Because no promise from God. But Sarah could not have Isaac until God came. For it's not by power or by might. But by the spirit of the Bible says as many as are born of the spirit, they are huh? they are children of God. And if you don't have the spirit of God, you are not a child of God. He said, This is the promise. At that time I will return. I will come again. And then Sarah will have a son. That is the son of God. All sons of God are born by the power of God. That's why those that are born of the flesh are not children of God. Sarah said to Abraham, we are getting old. Take Ishmael. Let Ishmael bring you, bring us a son. Because we are old. I mean, Hagar. Take Hagar, my, my, my maid. And Hagar will conceive and bring forth a son. Son is a son. Abraham said, but God said, you, my wife, Sarah, will bring forth the boy. His name will be Isaac. Why don't we wait? For the Bible says that Abraham did not stagger at the promise of God. But when the woman staggered and staggered, just as she staggered in the Garden of Eden, staggered again and just as Adam went along with his wife in the garden of Eden Abraham went along with his wife and they produced a wild man of the flesh but that did not stop the promise of God God said I will return at the right time I will return but before God returned they had given themselves a child of the flesh called Ishmael God said that's not my son that's a child of your flesh. And we have too many children of the flesh today. So many of them. So many. And when people look at their behaviors and their activities, they judge. And they judge wrongly. Because they know not that one is a child of the flesh and one is a child of the promise. Two of them can never behave the same way. 
If you come to church, that's fine. Your friend invites you, that's fine. Your family brought you to church and you grew up in church, that's fine. But that don't mean you have been born of the Spirit. By faith are we saved. Not of works. Lest any man should boast. This is the work of God. No man can boast about salvation. It is the supernatural work of God. I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. A woman that has received a new heart and a new spirit can never be the same with a woman that has never received a new heart and a new spirit. A few Sundays ago, I was telling the church of the vogue that is going on in the world today and it's infiltrating the churches. How women will go to native doctors to get people to love them, to get their husbands to love them, to get their wives to love them and make charms and put it in their food and bury it in the ground and do different things. That's what a woman that has not received a new heart, that has not received a new spirit, that's what they can do. But a woman that has received a new heart and a new spirit cannot do that. And when you see a, a so-called church goer doing such a thing, you wonder, what about all the word of God that she has heard all these years? Where has that word gone? The word of God is the word of God. The woman is not a child of God. That's why the word has no effect. When Moses said the voice of God from the fiery furnace, I am the God of your father Abraham. I have heard the cry of my people in Egypt. And I have come down and I'm sending you to go and get them out. He bowed down because he could not look on God. Hallelujah. He bowed down his face. He could not look on God. But when Moses got to Pharaoh's house and said, the God of the Hebrews sent me. Look at the behavior of one that is not a child of God. He said, who is God of Hebrews? Who is that? Moses said, the God of our fathers. Pharaoh said, I don't know him. God of your father, I don't know him. See my own God here. One has the head of a bird. The other one has the head of Malu. Does he look like any of the God you are talking about? He said, well, since I don't know your God, I'm not letting anybody go. He saw the first miracle, second miracle, third miracle, fourth miracle, fifth miracle. How many miracles will it take you to believe? How many? Until his firstborn died. Then he said, wait a minute. The next person to die may be me. Okay, call this man, call this man. And they brought Moses in the night. He said, before morning, take your people, go. All of you, your dog, your goat, your sheep. Get out! Before you kill all Egypt. Moses said, thank you very much. We are going. Before morning, we are going. Before they went a few miles, they said, wait a minute. If I let these people go, who will farm in my farm? See? He had forgotten that his firstborn died. He forgot that death passed through his house. He got his chariots ready. Got his army ready. He said, bring them back. They are our slaves. And he went with them and didn't come back. God said, I raised him up that I may show my power to everybody that thinks he's somebody all over the world. Glory be to his holy name. Glory be to his holy name. There's something we must always remember. There are people who are not children of God. Don't be like them. When you see a sister dressing and she cannot walk because she wants to be like the world. Sons of God. Be like them. Make friends with them. They will help you. They will encourage you. Then the gates of life eternal. You will enter together. Glory be to our God. One more thing I want to emphasize. Children of God are different from the children of the flesh. I want you to know that. Blessed be the name of our God. If you would like to turn with me. To 
Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18. Look at the promise. And verse 10. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And Sarah had it in the tent door, which was behind him. Can we say amen? amen. That was the promise. If every son of God in the past had a promise of God upon him before he was born, and at his birth, he was accepted by God because of the promise that went forth. So also, every child of God today will have a promise that has gone forth before you were born. Listen to this. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever Believers in him shall not perish but have. Is that a promise? That's a promise. The Bible also said, He came to his own. His own received him not. Amen. But as many as received him. That's a promise. Amen. This is another one. Wait at the upper room. For you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Then you shall be Pentecostal witnesses, Baptist witnesses, Anglican witnesses. What did he say? My, my, you shall become my adoption. The Holy Ghost adopts you into the family of God. You don't have the spirit of God, you are not a child of God. You have the spirit of God, you are a son of God. As many as are led by his spirit, they are the sons and daughters of God. Can the church say amen? Promise. You have to come in by a promise. Isaac was born by a promise. Go back to Romans chapter 9. Quickly. Romans chapter 9. We're reading verse... All right, we read verse uh, 10. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. Correct? For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God to, el uh, to election, according to election, my son, not of works, but of him that called it. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. Amen. The elder shall serve the younger. That's another promise. Is that true? Who was the elder? Who was the younger? Glory be to our God. Turn with me to Genesis 25. Genesis chapter 25. Very interesting experience. We are in verse 23. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in the womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, 
and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb, and the first came out red as over or all over like an hairy garment, and they called his name Ethel. That's something. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when he when she bare them. Notice, notice, there was no promise that went with Esau. The promise was with. Jacob, the young, the, the elder shall serve the younger. Who benefits from the promise? Jacob. Because naturally, junior shall serve senior. Is that true? Naturally, the junior shall serve the senior. But now, because Jacob is the son of God, and the promise of God to you is, that his children will be head and not the tail. Ishmael came before Isaac, but God made Isaac the head. Here, Esau comes before Jacob. God makes Jacob the head. If you also are born by the promised word of God, you too will be head and not tail. I am a good example. And I thank God for his word in my life. You believe God's word without a doubt. The word of God has power in itself to perform that which he promised. It doesn't need your help. All you need to do is believe it. Look at a seed of corn. All it needs is a good ground. Put it in the ground, cover the ground, leave it there and go. It has power in itself to germinate. Amen. Amen. If your heart is a good ground, let the word of God drop. Swallow it completely. Amen. Amen. And you'll find out that it has power in itself to transform you to the head and not the tail. If you are not a hypocrite. So, every sincere child of God has a promise that God has made for you. And that promise will catch up with you. Because God's word cannot fail. Jacob represents God's children. God does not judge them absolutely because of their works. God judges them because of their faith. And because of the promises that God gave them. We read in the Bible about Esau and Jacob concerning marriage. Esau heard that the, their father Isaac told Jacob not to marry. Isaac told Esau and Jacob not to marry the women around them who are not believers in the God of Israel or the God of Abraham as it was called then. God of Abraham. There was a time he was God of Abraham because Isaac was not yet born. When Isaac was born, he became God of Abraham and God of Isaac because Jacob was not yet born. When Jacob was born, he became God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. And when he changed the name of Jacob, he became God of Israel. Glory to his holy name. Don't worry from around here. And when Esau saw that Jacob was willing to obey his father. He, who is a child of the flesh, disobedient by nature, rebellious and stubborn by nature, because the flesh is always rebellious to the word of God. The Bible says the spirit and the flesh are always in, in disagreement. The spirit wants to obey, the flesh does not want to obey. 
Esau went out and married two at a time. Just to ridicule his father. Why? He's a child of the flesh. And the one that is ignorant can say, why should the son of a prophet disobey a prophet? Why? It's because that child was born of the flesh. And he had no promise of God in his life. But look at Jacob. The son that has promised. A spiritual son. Look at what he had to pass through to get a wife. He had to travel down to where his father and mother ordained for him to go. He didn't say, well, my senior brother has got two here already. Why should I travel to where I don't know? Papa, allow me now. Let me marry this. This, this one is a very small girl. Before she grows up, she will believe the God of Abraham. See? Or just get one girl, come to the, the, their house and pretend to be believer in the God of Abraham, like so many do today. Just bring somebody to church who is not a believer to deceive yourself. That's fine. You, every Abraham must marry Sarah, and every Ananias must marry Sapphira. Period. God cannot be mocked. For what a woman saw, that she shall reap. What a man saw, that he will reap. Jacob had to travel in obedience. Why? He's a child of promise. He's a child of God. He traveled to where he doesn't know. He even had to use a stone to be his pillow in the night. See where obedience took him to. Obedience took him to where he saw the gates of heaven. Where he saw angels going up. Angels coming down. And he looked a little bit more. And he saw God sitting on the throne. Glory be to our God. Hallelujah. That's where obedience took him to. Meanwhile, Esau was having children. Producing all the adults that you can think of. And all the area boys around. And Jacob when he got to the destination to get a wife, sons of God, listen, you will be tried. For everyone that cometh to God must be tried. And trials are different, 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 different types. Don't ask questions. Only believe. All things are possible. Oh, my business has not been good for 10 years. Oh, I have not had a child. Oh, I have not. What is that to God? When we talk about Job, how do you feel? Don't you feel proud of that man? God must have Job today. God must have Shadrach today. God must have Daniel today. God must have Sarah today. God must have uh, uh, Rebecca today. God must have all these people. But let me tell you, if God chooses you to pass through any of these experiences, it is for his glory and your blessing. Because the day he will remember you. He will put laughter in your mouth until all your teeth will show. You will laugh until you can't laugh anymore. Because he doesn't forget. He never forgets. Look at Jacob, a son of God. Look at where he's going. Obedience has led him to the very throne of God, the gates of heaven. And he saw what disobedience could not see. And that's why when I see my children pay their tithes, and others could not, I know why. Obedience sees things that disobedience cannot see. When I see my children come and walk for the Lord in the camp, carrying gravels and, uh, and shovels and digging as if they're laborers, I say to myself, obedience has seen. Obedience has seen. What disobedience can never see. And he went from there. And in the morning he woke up and he took that stone, poured oil on top of it, anointed a stone. 
That's all he had. He anointed a stone. I said, oh Lord God, if you will take me to where I'm going and give me a wife and bring me back in peace, I will worship you. And I will pay my tithe of everything that you give me. One tenth is yours. When you haven't got it, you had already paid. Some of you have it. And for six months, you haven't paid. Disobedience can never see what obedience can see. And he went and he got to the well. First thing he did was serve. He saw some people sitting at the well and said, Do you know Laban? They said, Yes, we know Laban. Is he alright? Oh, yes, he's fine. Uh, where does he live? Oh, down that side. Oh, look at his daughter coming to water the sheep. And when he saw Rebecca, wow, such a pretty girl. And he said, Can I water the sheep for you? Fine, huh? thank you. What are the sheep? Well, I am um, uh, Rebecca's son. Uh, your mother, your father's uh, sister, and all that. Oh, sure. Okay, let me go and tell my father. And from the well to the house to make it honorable. Some people, their own engagement starts from the street. From the street to one corner by this corner. You know what I mean? By the corner. And it becomes secret until they are deceiving themselves. I am Rebecca's daughter. Your father's brother. Oh, can I see your father? Sure. From there, straight home. There is no secret about it. I wonder God that he began to serve Laban. He didn't talk about marriage. He was serving Laban faithfully. Why? Obedience brought him. There's a promise of God upon him. The blessings of his father was upon him. The blessings of his mother was upon him. He had nothing to worry about. Just wait for God. And he served. And he served. And he took care of the sheep. I don't know how long it was. One day, God moved Laban and said, this man can't be serving for nothing. You should pay him. Then Laban called him and said, well, my sister's uh, son, you have been a good servant and uh, you can't continue to serve for nothing. Uh, what would be your reward? What, what would you want me to, to, to give you? He said, well, uh, sir, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I came here to look for a wife uh, and I found one. Uh, where is that? I mean your daughter. Rebecca. Oh, okay. Um, let me serve you and then I'll be able to pay for her dowry. Oh, no problem. How long will I serve you? Well, you are my relation and I want you to marry her instead of somebody else from outside. So serve me for seven years and I'll give her to you. Wow. The Bible says seven years was like seven days. The man begins to serve. He begins. The man begins. Brother, the man begin not you not begin by asking He begin serve who? You are gonna write small letter, give one small pin. Go stand for gate. Give sister. That's how you serve your own. You reap what you sow. Brother, Jacob begin to wait. He has seen the blessings of, but he has not reached him all. We did not read anywhere that Rebecca became pregnant after four years' service. Can somebody answer me here? Did Rebecca become pregnant? Oh. Somebody tell me. We did not read in the Bible that after five years, Rebecca and Jacob passed backyard, ran away. Is that in your Bible? Why was he like that? Why was Jacob like this? Why is he so disciplined? Why? Faithful, obedient, honorable. Why? The spirit with which he was born is of God. Not a crafty spirit. For the Bible says God is light 
and in him there's no darkness at all. But Satan, the Bible says, is very subtle. Above all, beasts. So, Jacob fought for seven years. My, oh my. Seven years don't reach. You know what? Jacob is going to be a husband. I can imagine him sweep his house like never before. Sweep, eh? Move bed, move chair. Bring down the fan, clean it. Wow! Or put a picture of Rebecca all over the world. Wonderful husband. What will mama say when he has that? I'm married. Hi, Papa will be very happy. This will be a wonderful night. All the friends will come. And I'm the guest of honor. Shall you take this one to be your other wife? And go say yes. Ah, now what will from today? I will eat cooked food. Many things went from in his mind. Hallelujah. Not knowing that Laban was a 419. You must be tried. God knew all that would happen to that man. But he was being tried. That night, all the celebration going on, people dancing, flute, trumpet, everything, meat, drinks, food, everywhere, guests of honor, everybody food everywhere. While Jacob was busy, you know, congratulating visitors that came, they cover Leah very well. Only the eye came out. And just drag her quietly, quietly from the back door into the room. Yeah. After all, there's no nepa. So there's no way he's going to see. And they made sure the party went on till midnight. And when Jacob was tired, all he had to do was just lie down and sleep. Then the next morning he woke up after sleeping with his wife. Who are you? So uh, my name is Leah. Leah what? What are you looking for? Where is Rebecca? Well, Rebecca is my junior sister. You have to discuss that with my father. But for now, I am your wife. That's all. Huh? Jacob said, is this how this world is? He felt like getting up and running away. Then he went to Laban. Why did you deceive me? You lied to me. This, this and that. We had an agreement. Rebecca, seven years. This and that. Uh-uh. Wait. You came from far away. This is another land entirely. By the custom of this land, the senior will marry first before the junior. We have heard that in your own place here, it is the senior that serves the junior according to your promise. Huh? But here, it is the junior that serves the senior. So, either you take Leah quietly or there is nothing I can do about it. But, but, Jacob said, I still love Rebecca. That's the person I want. Okay, seven years again. That's the diary. The man starts serving again. Savo. Forty years was like fourteen days. When Jacob saw that his blessings were co coming through Jacob, God was channeling his blessings and his prosperity through Jacob. He began, he began to play tricks on the man. People will do that to you. Companies, they know you are honest. Companies, where you work, they know that you are honest man, but they won't tell you. See? When they need somebody trustworthy for some responsible duties, they call you. Because they recognize you are very honest and God fearing. But when promotion comes, they give to their friend. Don't worry, God knows all that. So, Jacob says, from now on, I mean, Laban says, from now on, from now on, all your salary will be white, white sheep. All the sheep that is white will be a salary. God says, yes, let that be a salary. And Jacob agreed. And that year, all the sheep that was healthy and strong was all White. Love and say no. No, it cannot be. I made a mistake. Your salary now from now will be spotted 
as an unspeakable chief. The one that have black, white, brown, yellow, that is your salary. Okay, I agree. Jacob prayed to God. And God told him a stick, cut the stick. Carve it this way, peel it this way. Put it near the trough or the basin where mothers, female sheep come to deliver or come to drink water when they are pregnant. Jacob called the, the, the sick, peel it, peel it, put it where they drink water. Every female, every sheep that is pregnant, I mean, that wants to drink water, comes to that trough. Drink, 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 look up. What is this one? Never seen this kind of thing before. Then drink, 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 drink. Look up. While it's looking, all the baby in their womb will turn to that circle. God is God! Hallelujah! 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 You are the son of God. Don't worry, let them play their tricks. God will catch up with them. Only believe. All things are possible. Yeah. That year, all the healthy and strong sheep were speckled. Jacob said, What? What's going on here? And one day, Jacob saw that Laban was not happy with him anymore. He said, I want to go home. I want to go home. Let me go and see my parents. On his way, Esau, the carnal brother, always looking for trouble. The one that eternal life is not important to. The one that the things of God means nothing to. He heard the story that Jacob, his brother, was coming back. He amassed his army. He amassed his army. And on his way, Jacob heard that he was coming and he prayed to God. And they sat somewhere for the night and God came down to meet Jacob. And they began to wrestle. Remember, God never went to Esau to wrestle with him. God came to Jacob and they had a little wrestling. Can you imagine God wrestling with man? That's just father and son. Amen. And after the wrestling, Jacob's walking changed. His name changed. When you wrestle with God, your character will change. It will definitely change. You keep coming to church and going. That don't mean nothing. When you ever meet with God, your name will change. Your behavior will change. The way you dress will change. Everything about you will change. For the glory of God. Then God went to meet Esau. Call out his spirit in the dream. And say, where are you going? He said, I'm going to meet Jacob, my brother. He stole my birthright. Then he stole my this, then he stole my that. And God said, well, I am the God of that Jacob you are going to meet. When you get to him, don't say anything good or bad. Or you will be a dead man. And God disappeared. That changed Esau's plan. If you know that touching a son of God is touching the apple of God's eyes, you will be careful what you say and what you do against children of God because you're touching God directly. So, it's from Miss Jacob and says, if not for the God of our fathers, I would have done you harm. But he met me last night and said I must not touch you. So, I'm not going to touch you. Save Johnny. And he turned his army back and he left. What does that teach us? God fights our battle. God fights our battle. Amen. We don't need native doctors. We don't need false Babish prophets. We don't need them. What we don't know, God knows it. That trap that is set for you before you, God has seen it. And God will raise you up above it. And those that set the trap will fall into it. If you are a son of God, you have a promise. You have a promise. Blessed be his holy name. 
Less than one month from the fact close this message now. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, Mr. Let us round up this now. I want you to notice that there's a difference between Jacob and Esau. And all the children of God, born of the Spirit of God, born of the promised Word of God, are the Jacobs of today. They may have their problems. Jacob also had his infirmities. But there was a promise from that boy that obedience led him to the house of God. Obedience led him to see God. Obedience led him to wrestle with God. Obedience to God did not allow his father-in-law to deceive him or to defeat him. Obedience did not allow his brother Esau to defeat him. Because they that put their trust in God can never be put to shame. You believe that so, man? But the Esau's children of the flesh who are only interested in pleasing themselves and see being wise in their own eyes the word of God has no effect in their lives no effect remember the word of God has not lost effect the truth is it is effective in the children of God like Jacob it was effective in Jacob's life all through but it, at no time was it effective in Esau's life. And when you look at Jacob and Esau, you wonder why the children of Isaac are not obedient to God. It is because one is of the flesh and one is of the spirit. The same thing with Isaac and Ishmael. The same thing today depends on what you are. Whether it's son of God or just a child of the flesh. All right. The Bible speaks about God gathering the entire world to himself. Gathering all nations. When Jesus comes, he will gather all nations to himself, just as we are gathered here. And he's going to divide them only into two. Not three or four or five. He's going to divide them into two as sheep and goats. Brother, listen to me. I said Jesus will come and gather all nations and divide them into two. That's what I said. Not into three or four. And one side he will call the sheep to go on his right hand and the goats to go to the left. Jacob and Esau. Jacob went to the land of obedience. Esau went to the land of disobedience. Who was victorious at the end? Who received the presence of God? Who returned victorious? It is the end of a thing that matters, not the beginning. But in this gathering, God, all the scriptures has never shown interest in goats. God has always demonstrated his interest in his sheep, not in goats. The only time we see God showed interest in goats is in the sacrifice for sin. And God said, bring the goat and kill it. That's all. Bring it, kill it. As a sacrifice for sin. Finish. But in many, many, many scriptures, we see God demonstrating interest and oh, loving kindness for his sheep. Not one time did God do that for goats. And I want to show you that before we close now. Glory be to our God. Turn with me now to the book of John. The gospel according to St. John chapter 10 chapter 10 I'm reading verse 11 I am the good shepherd Amen, Amen. The good shepherd 
shepherd had given his life for the goat? Huh? For what? There is no place. There is no place you will find in the entire scripture that God showed any interest in the goats. Who are these goats? They are children of the flesh. Many times we sympathize with this carnal, stubborn, unbelieving, rebellious children of God or children that think they are children of God but they are not children of God because if they are, they will not be rebellious, they will not be stubborn, they will be meek, they will be lonely in heart for that is the nature and character of a sheep. And Jesus said, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Turn also to the book of John, chapter 21. St. John, chapter 21. And verse 16. He said unto him again, the second time, Simon, Son of Jonas, Lord, let thou me. He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. You can read verse 15 to verse 17 to verse whatever you like. You will never see where God said, Feed my goat. Never. He is not interested. And why are we interested in what God is not interested in? Brother, let's go to camp. Ah, no. Don't have time for that. Brother, oh, you're not going to fellowship today. No. Green eagles are playing red eagles. I don't want to miss it. Sister, are you not going to sister's uh, meeting today? Ah, no. I'll go next week. Leave those people alone. There are ghosts and there are sheep in the house of God. God only died for a sheep. God is the shepherd of the sheep. God commanded the servants to feed the sheep. He has no interest in the goats. And as long as you sympathize with these goats, evil communication will begin to corrupt good manners. Matthew chapter 10. Esau and Jacob are two different people. Matthew 10 verse 16. Stop that. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as dogs. Can we say amen? Can we say amen? Can we say amen? amen? The goat was not sent to preach. The goat was not sent to preach. It was the sheep that was sent forth. In the midst of violent wolves, and yet we are commanded to be harmless. When you see a brother who is harmful, or a sister that is harmful, either with the mouth or with the hand, remember, that's a goat. She don't have horns, she doesn't need it. But goats, they have their horns. And they can use it at any time. A child of God that has been in the house of God for years and is ready to fight at the slightest minute. That's a goat. We are commanded to be harmless, to be wise, and to be harmless. Don't harm anybody. That's the commandment for sheep. God's interest is only in the sheep. Not the goats. Not Esau. You will find that God has no business with Esau. 
We can see in Jacob's life, every step of his life, we can see divine involvement, divine guidance, divine intervention, divine protection. In every part of Jacob's life, the hand of God is made manifest. But in the part of Esau, you can't see God in any way. God only warned him, if you touch my son, you're a dead man. See that? If you're a sheep, you are in the hands of God. If you're a goat, I'm very sorry. Look at Matthew chapter 12 and verse 11. And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep? And if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? Praise the Lord. God here emphasizes. Although he has plenty of sheep, each one, each individual is important to him. And that means you as an individual. Even though God has hundreds of thousands of millions of believers all over the world, that cannot make him to be too busy to attend to one that is in trouble. That is the, the, the benefit of being a sheep. God asks us, if you have plenty of sheep and one fall into a pit, do you say, well, I have plenty, leave that one, let it die. Is it possible? Now, if we who are, if we can do such good, what about God himself that is good? Have you given your life to Christ? Have you given your all? Have you surrendered all? Is the word of God effective in your life? Does the word of God control your life? Do you fear and tremble at the word of God? Somebody said, um, Sister, why are you doing such a thing? I'm going to report to the pastor. I'm going to tell him now. I'm the pastor. Tell all the others. That is the voice of a, a goat. That is only coming to tell me. That is what? A goat. I have no responsibility for goats. God said, feed my sheep. I have goats. I have sheep. Their nature is very interesting. A sheep will look at you and recognize his master and come and come and meet you. Even if you have a cutlass in your hand, it will still come. If you like, you kill him. After all, his life is in your hand. But a goat, you have food. I mean food, though. He will look at you. Bend his head down. Look at you. Move that small. No trust you at all. You don't have any life for food. You want to give him food. You are coming here, he's going back. You are coming here, he's going back. Then when you drop the food and the sheep are eating, you will watch from far away. When he thinks that you have gone and there's no more danger, you will come, bra, 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 and all the sheep will give chance. Then the food belongs to him alone. That's a goat. That's his nature. And the sheep will go on to whether they should eat or not. See? Esau was a goat. Everything about him was contrary. Contrary to his father. Contrary to Jacob. Contrary to his mother. No wonder why the mother says, when Jacob says, my father will discover and, and curse me. He said, let the curse be on me. Go and bring the thing. Because the mother was a spiritual woman. She knew what God told her. The junior will serve the senior. See? One people will be stronger than the other people. And today Israel is stronger than the Arabs. Amen. The word of God cannot fail. No matter how small, they are stronger. Because God is with them. And if God is with you, you are stronger. I don't care who your enemies are. Natural or spiritual, God with you are stronger than them all. Glory be to His holy name. 
So if you're a sheep, you look at this wonderful promise. God says he's interested in you as an individual. If you fall into a pit, God will not be too busy with all the millions of other sheep. He will come and pick you out. That's the blessings of a sheep. Alright. Look at chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. Verse 12. How think ye, if a man have a hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, does he not leave the ninety and nine, and goeth into the mountains, and seeketh that which is gone astray? And if he be that, if so be that he find it, very I say unto you, he rejoiced more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. Amen? Mm. Even so it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven. Even so it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. It is not the will of our Father in heaven that the weakest one among us shall perish. Amen? Amen? No matter what you're passing through, hang on. 